Hey everybody, Carrie and Jenny here. I'm Jenny, I'm the communications person. It's Carrie, our associate director. And we are taking you on a bog walk today. So let's get started. We're walking down the open road here. And suddenly, there's the trail to the bog. Let's go. Mud Lake Bog is a land trust preserve within the Little Travers Conservancy system. And we're gonna take a virtual hike to show you some of the plant species that live here. Cause I'm swatting bugs here. Okay, the first plant that we're seeing on the trail here is the sensitive fern, Anoclea sensibilis. And it is typically on substrate that's classified as upland, but the bog is pretty flooded these days. So it's a little wet, but there it is. Here we're seeing more of the sensitive fern. And then also, right there, you can see the royal fern, Osmunda regalis. This is a transition between upland and bog habitat. Where the boardwalk ends, my friends, so we are... Going deep. Going deep. <laughs> we got some scat on the trail. Carrie, what do you think it is? Mammal. Good call. So now, after our walk through a more wooded area, we're emerging into an open area. You can see the canopy's really opened up as we get closer to the sphagnum mat. So here we're seeing a tamarack. As Carrie says, it's a deciduous conifer, which doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make, make any sense. Any sense. <laughs> It means it loses its, le it loses its leaves every year. This right here is Labrador tea, uh, Ledum Groenlandicum. We found some good Areophorum, cotton grass. Again, substrate is hydric as we're moving into the bog proper. We're facing back into the woods now. Carrie found some bog rosemary. Which I don't know the proper name of. The browns mats that you see are, is areas that are um, been trampled on by too much use from people coming out and it takes a long time for this type of habitat to recover. Everything grows slowly. You look at the trees out there, they've been here a long time but they're not very tall because it's very nutrient limited. Sights and sounds of the bog as we're moving through the sphagnum mat here. A cranberry! Yay! A cranberry! Here's a pitcher plant. Flowering pitcher plant. This is the flower and then if you come up closer you can see inside the pitchers. There's water in the pitcher. And if you, I don't know if you can see it, but they're little um, hairs, not really hairs, but hair-like structures that um, point downward on the inside edge, and it keeps the insects from escaping once they fall in. Listen to those sounds of the bog, the sphagnum mat. You can hear Gary back there <laughs> sloshing around. <laughs> hard to describe the scent of a bog, but it's always a little bit like sour laundry detergent. <laughs> you can hear bird song, you can hear bullfrogs, hermit thrush is calling in the distance. Hill Crane. Look at 
that beautiful rosy color of the sphagnum mat. You can hear our sandhill crane friend calling in the distance. wonder if we're getting close to the nest. And open water up ahead. <laughs> I think it's a cranberry. I hope it's a cranberry. The sights, sounds, and tastes of the bog. It's a cranberry. There's the lake. And this area right in here is the mat. So it's a mat growing on top of the lake. And then the forest starts. So right here we're... Indeed. We're very carefully walking on this mat. So we are suspended above open water on this thick mat of sphagnum moss. It's kind of spongy, kind of springy. On the edge of open water here we're seeing Carex lasiocarpa wiregrass sedge. As we look out over the bog we're thinking about why certain plants grow where they do in this very acidic environment. Here's a tamarack that's been here a while but doesn't get very tall compared to the tamaracks that are on um, the drier part of the land. That's an interesting point, Carrie. Might make a good scientific question. Here's the leather leaf and can compare that to the vaccinium, which is way down here. See the old cram last year's cranberries and the vaccinium is really small leaves. So here's a view as we're emerging from the open water and the sphagnum mat of the bog. Here's we're going Ooh, Carrie found a good pitcher plant. We're going back from whence we came into the more heavily wooded area along the trail and the boardwalk. The leadum has a really distinct scent. If you grab a leaf, turn it over, and squeeze it, this is it's kind of like what gives the, the bog its um, detergent-like scent. But it smells really good. So we think we found the three-way sedge here. Mm -hmm. Carrie's pointing to it. Delicium arundineum growing in a pretty hydric habitat here, or a, mo a moss hummock. It's growing on a moss hummock. Look at the moss hummock. There you go. True to form. We've got a frog friend. A frog friend, bog friend. You guys ever read Kubla Khan by Samuel Taylor Coleridge? Down the green hill, athwart a cedar in cover. Look it up, it's a classic. Right off the boardwalk, here's a calla palustris, water arum or wild calla. Substrate is hydric, very much so. What's that, Carrie? It's a balsam. You want to sniff it? What does it smell like? They have these little sap bubbles on the sides, and if you poke it, oh god, it's, it was projectile. Pretty sappy. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to Natural Adventures with Carrie and Jenny. More episodes coming soon. Giddy up. <laughs>